I, uh... I have a confession. For the past 11 years, I have been plant-based. And well, today... Today, here we sit. There is this idea. This idea that food causes inflammation in our body. Inflammation. Okay, what even is inflammation? Do the foods you eat, does the diet we follow, do the nutrients that we consume cause inflammation? Let's find out. Inflammation. 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 A phrase we hear so often, yet a topic so complex, it makes the electoral college look like a joke. Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Frank Cusimano. I have a PhD in nutrition and metabolic biology. And today we're going to be diving into one of my favorite topics. Now, if you are new to my channel, all of the topics and references that we're going to cover today, you can find links to them in the papers and the articles that we discuss on my website at www.frankcusimano.com. Now, one of the areas that I focused on for my PhD was diet and the gut microbiome. And one area of specific interest to me is this idea of lifestyle and nutrition for the prevention of chronic diseases. Okay, so what is inflammation? Think of inflammation as the body's natural response to protect itself against harm. It's like your own internal police force, Army, Marine Corps, and Fire Station all into one. Now there are two major types of inflammation. You have acute and chronic inflammation. Now most of us are familiar with acute inflammation. Take a small cut in your finger, or when you get a cold, our immune system dispatches an army of white blood cells to surround and protect critical areas and kill or neutralize any of the pathogens or foreign invaders. Now inflammation often gets a bad rap. But the reality is, is that inflammation is actually very beneficial. Its response is actually what keeps us alive when we are in danger. Now, chronic inflammation is actually much harder to understand. And when elevated throughout our life, it can actually cause issues. Now, chronic inflammation occurs in response to autoimmune conditions or unwanted substances in our body, such as toxins from cigarette smoke, or as a response to circulating metabolites and certain lipids disrupting the epithelium of the arteries over decades leading to atherosclerosis and plaque formation. Now when it comes to diet, foods that we eat affect our immune system. When we eat food, it enters our gastrointestinal system. That's the system from our mouth all the way to our anus. And once in our intestinal tract, food is digested and our gastrointestinal associated lymphoid tissue, which is really just a fancy name for our, our intestines immune system, maintains immune homeostasis by inducing tolerogenic responses to those orally introduced pathogens, i.e. an immune response to the ingredients in our food. Well, how much of a response? Well, our intestinal immune system actually makes up about 60 to 80 percent of our entire immune system. Now, is eating this burger going to cause chronic inflammation in my body? Well, not exactly. Is it going to cause acute inflammation? Well, to a degree, the answer is actually yes. Each meal causes an immunogenic response, a term that we call postprandial inflammation. Now, you may think that that is crazy, but you don't actually have to take my word for it. To date, there's over 277 different clinical trials, meta-analyses, and randomized trials trying to understand this very topic. So if this one meal can cause acute inflammation, what do you think eating foods like this every single day for every single meal does to our immune system? Exactly. This leads to chronic inflammation. Day in and day out, our dietary choices can add up, leading to sustained chronic inflammation. So how do different food groups affect different parts of our immune system? Over the years, three to four different indices have been studied to describe the dietary inflammatory potential of food groups based on human studies, human food questionnaire data, and concentrations of different inflammatory markers during dietary trials. Not surprisingly, each of these indices identified the same food groups adding to the validity of the data. For those wondering, these indexes were not published in small no-name journals. No, 
One of them, the Empirical Dietary Inflammatory Index, was developed and validated at Harvard Medical School, Harvard School of Public Health, Mass General Hospital, and Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. Now, each of these indices did a few different things. They identified dietary food patterns that are predictive of inflammation as measured, measured by different plasma inflammatory markers, which can be measured. Some of them have been validated using prospective studies, and one collated data from over 6,500 different scientific articles on food substances. So let's break this down. What do we actually know? Certain foods are associated with pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory properties. Those who consume the highest pro-inflammatory dietary pattern are at the highest risk of developing things like cancer, metabolic syndrome, heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, Alzheimer's disease, obesity, dementia, and depression. Those who consume the highest pro-inflammatory dietary pattern have the greatest changes in inflammatory markers such as IL-1 beta, IL-4, IL-6, IL-10, TNF-alpha, TNFR2, C-reactive protein, adiponectin, leptin, and ICAM-1. These dietary patterns are also associated with things like hyperglycemia and unfavorable lipid profiles, mainly increased triglycerides and low HDL. Now, some of the more relevant symptoms that you may experience from these pro-inflammatory dietary patterns are things like higher BMI, anhedonia, tiredness, changes in appetite, craving, and feelings of inadequacy. Since these indexes have been published, there are several studies that have come out backing their results, and even a recent article in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, those who adhere to pro-inflammatory dietary patterns are at an increased risk of developing cardiovascular disease. Okay, that was a lot of information. At the end of the day, certain foods are known to cause acute inflammatory responses. Take this burger, for instance. The reason why these foods cause inflammation is multifactorial. It is a combination of immunogenic microbial and endotoxemic effects from foods like this that you eat every single day. Now at the start of the video, I almost ate this burger. Do you think I actually went through with it? Well, in the next video, we will see how I felt after eating this burger. And we're also going to cover all of the foods that are both pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory according to the papers and the different indexes we mentioned today. For now, if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment below. This channel is for you guys, and I want to answer your guys' questions, clear up some of the myths around nutrition. So if you have a specific topic or a question that you want me to answer in any future videos, make sure to do a few things. Go ahead and leave a comment down below on any of my videos, that question, and then also send me a DM on Instagram, which you can find the links down in the notes below. Uh, go ahead and DM me. If I see the same question popping up on a few different platforms, and it's a greater chance that I, I do a video on it for you guys. Also, if you like this video, make sure to share it. Make sure to subscribe down below. Also, make sure to hit that notification bell down below. That way you can get alerted the second that next video drops when we, we kind of cover the pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory food dietary patterns based on those indexes. With that, thanks for following along. And until next time, manja la tue vedure.